I've been told I have a perfect accent in every language that I speak. Is that really possible? Entonces, la primera vez que me encontré con él, yo no sabía nada sobre su pasado. Moi, personnellement, je n'aime pas lire des livres de fiction. C'est pas mon truc. Letztens habe ich das Wort für Alien gelernt. Und das ist außerirdischer. As primeiras vezes que a gente falou, eu não sabia. A gente falou em outro idioma, né? Então, eu não percebi que ele era de outro país. Ban penir chok sevior. I think, yes, I do speak well, but I also think people are being overly nice, like, especially Brazilians and Turks, they love telling you, oh my god, like, your Turkish, your Portuguese is so, so good, but you don't have to want to speak like a native to just improve your accent in a foreign language, and that's what we're gonna talk about today, how to improve your accent in general. There are certain things, certain methods, and certain resources that you can use to work on this. You're not stuck with one accent forever. You can reduce your accent, and that's what I'd like to share with you. First, I feel like I do want to address the question of, like, why should you even care about this? You know, I don't care about hearing an accent when I hear English. I do think people put too much importance on it when we talk about language learning in general sometimes, but me personally, I don't want to sound like an American in other languages because I think the American English accent is so, so recognizable. Yeah, also I think just the world has negative opinions about Americans most times, so I don't want to bring a reminder of where I'm from into another language. Like, I would like to pasar desapercibida, if you know what I mean. But yeah, for me personally, it's that I want to avoid stereotypes. That's just my reason. Anyways, let's talk about how to actually reduce your accent. My first kind of like umbrella blanket tip is that the alphabet or the phonetic system or whatever is not as simple as you think. For example, when you first learn a language and you learn its alphabet, you think, boom, I've learned the alphabet. That's something you can do in a day. But don't just learn the letters as isolated sounds. Learn how they come alive with other letters in like letter combinations and also in words in certain situations. Like, yeah, in the German alphabet, you learn that S is pronounced like S or Z, but in certain situations, like in front of P and in front of T, it turns into a Sh, like spas or stoppen. So if you say spas or stoppen, like nobody's gonna kill you, but it's obvious there's an accent there. Learning consonant clusters, like in Portuguese, LH, that becomes lia. I feel like every language has its specific sounds, and especially when it comes to like multiple letters coming together, them consonant clusters. That's that's really what's gonna get you, you know? So like a diphthong in German is au, like au, that's a simple one, but then there's also eu, which is oi, and you should also know that a with an umlaut U is also pronounced oi because umlaut a sounds like an e. God, see, you know, the, the wheels are turning. I'm not trying to make it sound complicated. So yeah, my general point with this is just that don't take the alphabet just for letters for what they are. See how the letters interact and how that can give you clues as how to pronounce things more like a native. Now, my next point is going to be to focus on the differences, the specific differences between your native language and your target language because your starting point might be affecting your results. Think of sounds in your target language that just don't exist in your native language. For example, nasal sounds don't really exist in English. So if an English native speaker is learning French or Portuguese, they need to focus on things like that because they're just not there. Turks, if you're working on your English, you know that we use a lot of W's. You guys don't. You guys don't really use W's at all. So focus on those things that just don't exist in your native language, aren't really used that much, and that you have to really start from zero. It's uncomfortable. Your throat and your mouth are going to do things that they've almost never done before, but it will be worth it in the end. And luckily, if you have a really common, really wide spoken native language, there's going to be a lot of resources to help you with this. Like if you're a Spaniard learning French, you know, there's tons of Spanish people learning French. So, but you know, if your native language is Telugu and you're trying to learn Spanish, I don't know about that. You know, <laughs> I don't know if something like this seems obvious to consider your starting point, but consider your starting point. A lot of people like to run away from these kind of realities, but a sound that you've never made before is not just going to appear out of nowhere. My next tip is to get lots of input, even as a beginner. Yes, even as a beginner. Of course, as a beginner, if you want to listen, most times you'll go to like a slow news podcast. There's a lot of slow news podcasts or podcasts that market specifically to beginners that speak really slowly. So there's, you know, that kind of slow speak element. But I've always said that, you know, there's no reason that a beginner can't also listen to just like native normal speech also, just for like exposure, you know? Think about if you were to move to a country and you were trying to learn this language, you know? It's not like everyone around you would just speak slowly. Everyone's gonna speak really fast, you know, at their natural pace, and you would eventually absorb it over time. As you keep learning, it's gonna make more sense. So I feel like listening to native natural speech as well as the slower speech that you can understand, I think doing those two in parallel, it helps you improve, but you also keep like the end goal in mind, you know? If you guys follow the Easy Languages Network, that's just, you know, the blanket kind of organization 
organization that has, you know, easy French, easy German, you know, they have easy Portuguese, easy English, they have so many languages. Their thing is like street interviews. So they do have like native natural street interviews, but they also have like, they do slow specific episodes for beginners. So if you're trying to get into input, even as a beginner, I definitely recommend their channel or just, you know, that whole network of videos. And another way that you can do this, get to know how people really speak in everyday life is by watching TV and movies on LingoPie. If you don't know LingoPie, it's like the streaming service for language learners. Think of it like the Netflix of language learning. They have over 3,000 movies and TV shows to choose from in like nine languages, I think. And it's a super, super interactive interface. You can use double subtitles to support you while you watch, you know, a little side-by-side -side comparison, if you will. And these are the best for learning vocab. If you want to know what a word means, you just hover over it and it automatically pauses the video. And there it is. If you click the word though, it's going to automatically save it to a flashcard deck for that specific show or movie, which is a really cool way to organize, you know, the different kinds of vocabulary that you get from the different things that you watch. You can do pop quizzes of your saved words after you're done watching or even while you watch. And the pop quizzes in particular are so cool because it replays the audio for that word when you pick it. But they also have this feature called Netflix Selects. Through this, you can watch the shows that you already love on Netflix, like La Casa de Papel for Spanish or Dark for German, but still using LingoPie's tools. So it's just, it's amazing. And you beautiful people, here's the thing. LingoPie offers a free seven day trial, but if you want to subscribe after that, you can get a ridiculously huge discount off your subscription with the link I put down below. And I don't get any part of that. It's not like, you know, I get a cut. It's it's literally just a discount for you, which will leave you with more money for important things like, you know, the roof over your head or food. So do yourself a favor, do me a favor. Stop just wishing that you spoke French, German, Portuguese, whatever, and go actually learn it on LingoPie. Now, next, there's no reason that you can't improve your accent or improve your speaking by talking alone or practicing alone by yourself. Like if you get super flustered talking to natives, which is so my experience with French, for example, I feel like I wanna try talking really fast and I wanna sound native. And because I'm overthinking how I sound so much, I end up sounding insane. So yeah, if speaking with natives is just not working out, there's tons of ways that you can practice and improve just on your own. First of which being using text-to-speech technology, either on your phone or your laptop. You can, you know, instead of typing or instead of tapping, you can just speak out loud what you want to say. So if you're in contact with other people that are learning the language, if you're talking to a native, just speak, don't type. Typing takes longer anyways. And obviously if the text-to-speech technology can't understand you, if it writes a word weird or it mistakes it for another word, you know that you need to work on the pronunciation for that specific thing. And another key element is modeling natives. Of course, everyone talks about shadowing. I feel like I talk about shadowing every five seconds. So if you wanna know what shadowing is, just look up shadowing language learning and you'll find an explanation. But more specifically, like if you just want to practice specific sounds and specific words, there's this website, Youglish, that you can use. Youglish, I think it used to just be for English and that's why it's called Youglish. But it has over 20 languages available, even some sign languages like American Sign Language, French Sign Language, British Sign Language. You search a specific word or like a specific phrase and it finds instances of that phrase in YouTube subtitles. So it searches YouTube subtitles and it shows you the parts of that video where they say it. So you can literally target words that you have trouble with or you know maybe conjugations that you have trouble with and just practice them back and forth with this video. Literally whoever invented this website, ah, it's so good. And it's free. So if you're not ready to full on do shadowing yet, I would recommend doing just like, you know, modeling a couple of words here and there with something like Youglish. Oh, also Forvo. I feel like Forvo used to be a lot better website. I think they're doing, trying to do a lot of different things now outside of just, you know, native recordings of words and stuff, but you can also search a specific word on Forvo and hear natives speak it. Lastly, my last tip is that you just have to speak with natives. You have to try and fail a lot. In this process, you'll get a lot of listening practice, but you'll also be able to get corrected and you know be able to ask certain things i think people are just so scared of speaking and it's like you're never going to get better at speaking if you don't practice it i've been saying this a lot recently speaking itself is a muscle that you have to train you know speaking and the way that you sound is not just you know accumulation of everything that you've done up to this point you know all your reading practice your vocab practice whatever to get better at speaking to sound better when you speak you have to speak a lot lose your fear of speaking just like literally exposure therapy yourself through it and it'll get easier. You know what? I did mention corrections and getting corrected, but the thing is you should also stop wanting to be corrected all the time. You need to be more active in trying to correct yourself and listen for the things that you hear in others' speech, maybe in native speech or other native speakers or other people learning it. Listen for the things that you don't do. I think waiting to be corrected all the time, like a lot of times people are not going to correct you. So you have to be a, a bit more proactive in what you hear and what you actually say. And you will get it right with exposure over time. You 
know, even if you don't get corrected every single time, just trust that, you know, from a lot of speaking practice, you will just absorb it if you're trying, if you have that in mind. Hope everybody's well. Um, I do have a little life update. I recently quit my job at Jive World. You guys know that I worked at Jive World for a long time. It's all peace and love with me and them, but I am now a full-time content creator again. It's so crazy to say that. I feel so scared in this time of my life because it's just like, it's a weird, I don't know, being a freelancer, being on your own is always just crazy. But this means that I have a lot more time to film videos and hang out with you guys. So yay! See you next time. Keep it cute. Try out LingoPi. It's actually very, very, very helpful. I'm, I only do sponsor deals for things that I actually recommend and I actually like. So you can always trust me with the things that sponsor. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Tschüssi!